I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left, no reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Hey, 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 you know what time it is. It is time for everybody out there to holla scream, baby. That is right, holla scream, you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is that, Fauci? What am I diving into here? Well, I'm gonna tell you. As you can see by the holla scream schedule, it is a review series set upon one of the greatest horror franchises of all time, Halloween. And here is the released schedule of all the dates that you should look forward to in finding out when a review, or in my case, a kill ranking, will be released. And as you can see by the bottom of the screen, all of those amazing YouTubers are partaking into this journey. Also, watch out for Chris Snyder. He will be doing reviews and putting them on Letterboxd, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But on this channel, since I already did a, a Halloween review series, I was going to dive into the Halloween kill rankings, just like I did for Friday the 13th. Except, I'm 100% more passionate about Halloween than Friday the 13th. So this is going to get good. Let's go, Halla Scream! Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are doing the original John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween kill ranking with also some added fun facts to begin the journey. So why don't we dive into those facts right now. It took less than two weeks to write this script for Halloween, which was originally entitled The Babysitter Murders. Deborah Hill wrote this script, and if you can believe it, 10 days. Um, Yerwin of Blondes, he wasn't a huge fan of The Babysitter Murders. He thought they should probably enlist some sort of holiday, kind of like Black Christmas, to hit harder than the Babysitter Murders. And if you look back, Erwin your Blondes, that was a genius idea because Halloween is probably the best horror movie ever made. So that might have been a great idea. Uh, another fun fact, 20 days to shoot this film. That was all it took. They started in the spring of 1978 and the film was released in October of the same year on a 20 day shoot that is impressive that they could do all that they did and create a classic in just 20 days that is very impressive john carpenter you are the man my friend the myers house was actually an abandoned house at the time of filming uh if you did not know the beginning shot of the movie when you see the fully furnished painted updated myers house that was actually the last shot of the movie. They filmed that last because they had to get the cast and crew in there to paint it, to furniture it. That isn't even a word, but I did it anyway. Furniture it up to make it look like that for the ending. So this movie was technically shot in reverse, not in chronological order, which tends to be the case on most films. So that wasn't very shocking to me. But that was still an interesting fact that it actually was an abandoned house that was, you know, decrepit and they used it for the film. In the beginning of the film that's amazing john carpenter completed the iconic halloween score in three days and he used bongo lessons that he had with his father in order to create the theme song and believe me the theme song for halloween is probably one of the most iconic themes in movie history and they tried the movie without the music at a like a test screening deal and it did not hit at all they added the score they added all the carpenterism throughout it really amped it up people really dug it that way so good thing that score was created or halloween might have been a huge flop but that's all for the fun facts let's get into the kill ranking shall we in the original halloween there was only five kills four were on screen and one you guess it happened but you saw a body and if you're watching a different cut you didn't see it at all so let's dive into these and see 
which is going to be number one for me. Coming in at number five, obviously, is Freddie Mercury laying in the bushes. Not Freddie Mercury? No? No, that was just a mechanic who was killed by Michael because Michael needed a new suit. He didn't want to walk, run around in a robe with his butt cheeks hanging out. And he saw opportunity. He saw this mechanic, saw the jumpsuit. Happened to be the right size. You know, a five foot nine guy, about 150, 160 pounds. It worked out for Michael. But if you don't have the widescreen version of this film, you're not even going to see that dead body laying in the bushes. We're not sure what happened to him. I read online somewhere that he was shot. Michael ain't using no gun, so that did not happen. Unless you think it did. Maybe he did use a gun. No, he didn't use a gun because he uses a knife. But yet it had to be last because you don't see anything. You just see the body, a little bit of blood. You do get Dr. Loomis on the phone about telling, warning Haddonfield that Michael's coming and they don't believe him. And he says, well, fine, then it's your funeral. There's a lot of build up to all these kills. There's always build up. There's always the music setting the mood and the tone. That's what I love about the Halloween 78 kills. It's not so much about the kill itself. It's about the build up around it. That's what makes it special. And at number four, I have Annie Brackett getting strangled in the car. The whole setup leading up to this, okay? She forgot the keys. No keys, but please, my Paul. She didn't have the keys, so she had to go back to the house to grab the keys to come back. But when she gets back to the car, she doesn't even put the keys in. She just lifts the handle, opens it, and gets in. But when she gets in, you can hear the breathing. You can hear the Michael Myers iconic breathing in the back seat. All the windows are fogged up, and as she tries to wipe it off, he pops up from the back seat, starts to strangle her. You see outside of the car, you see inside of the car, and then after a little bit of strangulation, he slits her throat, and you see through the fogged up window on the outside, her goofy, I just had an orgasm face, sliding down to hit the horn, which blares for a while, yet nobody hears it. And then Michael says, I can't take that horn anymore. It's driving me crazy. He walks her around the front of the house in plain sight, carries her through the front door, where you may notice her body flip-flopped which way he was carrying her because it was two different shots. If you know, now you know. Number three, I have Linda. After he's done disposing of Bob in the kitchen, he walks up the stairs smart enough and smart as he is has the ghost costume on puts bob's glasses on linda thinks it's bob she gives michael see anything you like shows her a little bit of the titties they're nice they're beautiful happy belated birthday pj souls i know your birthday was the other day you are 72 years old or should i say 72 years young thank you for being linda and bringing totally to the party but yeah, the, the scene, she, she's trying to, can I get your ghost, Bob? She's trying to get the beer off him, and then she, she's like, fuck this. I'm going to call, I'm going to call Lori. Lori answers the phone, and then Michael sneaks up behind her, starts to strangle her with the phone cord. Obviously, Lori thinks it's a prank, and then we get the iconic shot for the first time in plain view, the Myers mask in all of its glory. The William Shatner beautiful mask was redone to look super fantastic because originally they were going to go with the clown mask when uh, D Tommy Lee Wallace brought, came back, brought multiple masks. They went with William Shatner, took off the sideburns, painted it white, and there you go. It is history now. Um, he's listening on the phone as Lori's talking, and then I think he popped a boner because the sheet came back up. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That did not happen. But just the strangulation, and then, of course, he has to set up all those bodies in display because that's what Michael does, because Michael is the man. That's number three, Linda's totally rad death. Coming in at number two, I have the opening kill of the movie, Judith Myers being stabbed nine times. You don't know, obviously, you don't know who it is. It's through the point of the view of the killer. They're outside. He's watching Judith and her boyfriend in the living room walks around the house as they go upstairs you know goes in the kitchen we all know how it goes deborah hill's hand comes out grabs that knife and he walks up the stairs in the clown costume finds the mask slips it on you get to see through the clown mask pov walks into sexy judith's room sandy johnson former playmate 
beautiful girl, very beautiful woman. Michael starts wailing on her nine times. You don't know who it is at this point. Walks down the stairs out to the front door. His parents pull up to the house. Michael, make the mask off. They zoom out. It's a little six-year-old boy holding a sharp-ass butcher knife. Then the shot, a tableau, cinematic tableau, pulls back. Like a moment in time. People criticize that. Why didn't the parents do anything? Because that wasn't the point of that shot. It was to symbolize a moment in time. The parents are in shock. As the audience is in shock, looking at a six-year-old child holding a butcher knife that did just did something horrific that the parents don't even know yet. They will soon enough. Boom. And that goes away. Straight in. It's amazing. Amazing kill. That leaves one. I've heard this is an overrated kill. Coming in at number one, I am talking about Bob's death, where he is choked, held up against the wall, and stabbed to the wall with the iconic Michael head tilt. That is my number one, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, the setup, Bob goes to the kitchen to get a beer. He hears noises. He sees the doors open. He's down there. And he, oh, you, Linda, you asshole, opens that closet door. Michael comes out full force similar to what happened in H Kills, if I'm going to be honest, when he kills the one cop in the flashback. Didn't think about that until now. Write that down. I said it. Came out, struggling against. You get to see the strength of Myers. Just an ordinary man. Or is he? Picks Bob up against that wall, pulls the knife back, impels it into his chest, into the wall, which, if you really think about it, the knife wasn't long enough to go through Bob and into the wall to actually hold up a 160 pound man. But we're gonna put logic aside. You gotta go with it. The mood and atmosphere in that scene, there's no light but the, the moonlight from outside. The creepiness, the eeriness. You know somebody's around, but you just don't know where. You hear the breathing again, you don't know where. Then he pops out with that stinger. And then the what has become today as the, the famous head tilt the iconic head tilt that he does throughout many of these films. He steps back, looks at his amazing artwork on the wall, does the head tilt. Like, damn, I did a really good job on this one. I think I'm gonna hang this on the fridge. Oh wait, it's already hanging on the wall, bitch. Had to go number one, Bob's kill. Like I said, there wasn't too many to choose from. As I go along in this franchise, the kills are gonna go up. But I need to know your thoughts. I need to know what is your number one kill in Halloween 1978. You got to let me know. You got to leave it in the comments section below. I'm looking forward to hearing it. But hopefully you liked the video. Definitely make sure to click that like button for me. If you're new here by chance, hit the subscribe button. Come join all the fun that Fauci Cinema brings to the table. I can't wait to dive into the rest of these. I absolutely love the Halloween franchise, as you can't tell. By my background, my number one horror franchise there is michael myers is my number one slasher so these are gonna be a riot as these movies continue to raise the body count but like i said if you're looking to support any of this and anything that i do i have links below to my patreon my buy me a coffee and also my youtube membership anything that comes to me goes right back into the channel to help me buy a new camera new mic pay for my subscription to Streamyard because that ain't cheap you know just looking to build this channel and deliver a great product to you guys and i can't wait to do more and be here as a relief for you guys the crazy the world we live in is crazy but this is a fun time now that you checked out my kill ranking go check out all of my buddies that are participating in this review series check out their reviews show them some love give them a subscribe if you are not and i will see you in the next kill ranking which will be 1981's halloween 2 more of the night he came home. I'll see you guys in the next one. Shape on and have a scary day.